Hello guys, it's Johnny time and welcome to another Solidity Smart Contract Hacking Tutorial. So apparently putting the mic on is not enough. You actually need to know how to operate this thing. And as you probably know, hardware fails us all sometimes. And it failed me this time. It really failed me. And I hope that the next time it won't fail me and I will be able to provide for you videos with amazing sound quality. Thank you for the patience. Today we're gonna to solve the seventh challenge of them vulnerable DeFi, which is the compromise. Them vulnerable DeFi is one of the best capture the flag challenges to practice smart contract hacking vulnerability and exploits. And in this challenge today, we're gonna to deal with oracles with NFT marketplaces. So it's gonna be super interesting and you have to make sure to watch it till the end. And if you are the one who likes this kind of content, want to learn smart owner hacking, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notification button. And now without further ado, let's get started. So as usual, I highly recommend you to try to solve the exercise yourself first. It's always the best to learn by trying yourself. And if you get stuck, make sure to watch this video tutorial. Now, as we do in the other tutorials, we're gonna read the exercise, read the smart contract and the code, then plan our attack and eventually implement the exploitation and exploit the vulnerabilities. Now this is a compromise exercise Why, while packing around a web service of one of the most popular DeFi projects in this space, you get a some, somewhat strange response from their server and this is the snippet. So this is a 200 HTTP response with some data from Cloudflare. We don't know about this data, but it looks like hex decimal characters. So we are moving on, moving on to, the, to read the exercise instructions. A related on-chain exchange is selling absurdly overpriced collectibles called DV NFT, then vulnerable NFTs, now at 19.99 ETH per, per, per NFT each. The price is fetched from on-chain Oracle and is based on three trusted reporters. Then we have their addresses. Starting with only 0.1 ETH in balance, you must steal all the ETH available in the exchange. So it's going to be super interesting. There is exchange who fetch price data from oracles in order to set an NFT price. And right now the price is almost 1000 ETH per NFT, which is crazy high. So we need somehow, we're starting with 0.1 ETH and we need to steal all the exchange NFTs. It's going to be super interesting. Now let's go through the code and see how the system works. So we have three smart contracts, the exchange, the trust oracle and trustful oracle initializer in this uh, challenge. We have the JavaScript file uh, where we make all the setups. It will be our exploitation and the tests. Eventually the exchange need to have 0.1 ETH. The balance of the attacker ourselves should supposed to be the exchange initial balance because we stole all the balance from the exchange. The balance of the attacker, the NFT token, we are not supposed to have any NFTs in the end. And the price of the Oracle, the Oracle price of the NFT is supposed to come back to the initial price. Now let's take a look at the parameters. The exchange initial balance is almost 10,000 ETH, 99990. Then we have the initial NFT price, which is 9900, 999. These are the three oracles that were mentioned in the description and all the setup is going on here. So it's, we won't go through it because it's just the setup that is described over here in the exercise. Now let's check the smart contract. So we have the exchange smart contract. It's three entries cigars, 0.8 solidity, um, and it imports the oracles and the, the NFT, then valuable NFT. So it's same like the previous exercise, the then valuable token. Now we have an NFT, non-fungible token, ERC721, and it defines some variables, some events of token both, token sold. Here in the constructor, it gets the Oracle, uh, Oracle address, deploys the NFT, the exchange deploys the NFT, and set up loads the Oracle. So it's very interesting. And we have two main functions, buy one and sell one. Buy one is simply buying and one single NFT. It makes sure that we pay the message value is greater than zero. So we're paying at least some ifs. Then it fetch the price from the Oracle using the function get median price and make sure that we paid and greater or equal amount to the price uh, that the Oracle returned. 
So this is very interesting. Now there is, the price will be ob obviously 999 hit, but we need somehow to reduce the price. We don't know yet how, but we need to do that. This would be one of the attack vectors, might be. And then it's gonna mint the NFT, send it to the send the the, the money to send the, the, the money back from the, 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 the price difference between the NFT price from the Oracle then the the if that we send to the contract. Uh, emitting an event and returning a token. So this is quite simple function, buy one, sell one is the exact same one, but just instead of minting, burning the NFT and sending the, mo sending the money, sending the ETH to the, to the seller. So this is the exchange, quite simple, two functions and a constructor. So this is the initializer smart contract, which deploys a new Oracle smart contract. It gets an array of addresses of sources, symbols, and initial prices. Then it creates a new smart contract of Oracle instance and it sets the initial prices. So this is the Oracle, the actual Oracle smart contract. It inherits from access control innumerable uh, open Zeppelin smart contracts and it implements different roles. For example, we have only trusted source, only initializer modifiers, which we check that the sender is either the initializer or a trusted source. Here is an event of a price that was updated. The constructor that we saw before here in the initializer, we launched the constructor with sources and some kind of Boolean. And here is the sources and the Boolean, and it set up all the role of the sources. And here we set the initial prices, like we saw in the initialization of the Trustful Oracle. So it's quite makes sense. Now, in order to hack the exchange, we need to do some kind of price manipulation of Oracle. So I want you now to pause the video and think, what would you do in order to manipulate the prices? How would you uh, manipulate the Oracle prices? What, what kind of attack vectors come into your mind? Try to enhance uh, your attacker mindset and the uh, black hat mindset. So we have these three sources and all, the, all of them report the price of this, this kind of initial NFT price. So once we deploy the smart contracts, all of them gonna report this price, okay? Now we need to understand how the exchange fetches the price. So it calls the get median price function on the Oracle itself and the get median price function calls the internal function which is compute median price. It gets a symbol and it computes median price. How it does it, it basically sort all the prices first from all the trustful sources and then it takes the middle. So if there are three, it's gonna take the middle. If there is two, it's gonna be, basically that's the algorithm. It's quite simple. So it's sorting and taking the middle. So if, let's, you know what? In order to simplify it, I just made this kind of nice diagram and it shows you in a summary all the architect, architecture of this kind of uh, system. So we have the exchange. It has the buy one function and sell one function. Both, both functions get fetch the price from the Oracle median price, which is right now 999 ETH. Now it calls the trustful Oracle smart contract, contract the get median price, which calculate the price like we saw here, over here in this function, based on the three sources, takes the median of the three sources. Now, how to update the price if we want, if let's say we need to update to affect this kind of function, we need to somehow control this kind of oracles and then we can call the post price function which relies over here. And if we are the, if we are the, the ones with the, the trustful with the source because it has some kind, so it's only trusted sources modifier over here. So we need to be one of the oracles, the, the sources. If we are not one of the sources, the modifier will not let us get into this function and it will not let us, let us update the price. So we cannot just call this function, anyone can call this function. You need to be a trusted source. And this one will update the price. So this is our only way to update the prices. I don't see any other like vulnerability in this kind of system because it gets the prices from this function and this function can be updated only by the trustful sources that we need to somehow compromise them in order to update the price. And how the function is calculating the price, we can see this kind of um, um, diagram over here. So it's basically gonna sort it first and then 
pick the middle. So currently we have this kind of situation which is not good for us because all the sources report 999. What it does, it's gonna sort it and it takes the middle. Let's say we compromise one of the trustful sources. It's still not enough because if we have one and we change it to zero or some number near close to zero, it will still sort it and pick the middle which is 999, which means that we need to compromise two of the trustful sources in order to actually change the NFT price that it will affect the exchange. Because only when two of the oracles will be, the, the sources will be compromised, we'll be able to compromise the median price. And this is success for us. So we need to compromise two of the oracles. Now it's quite challenging. How do we compromise these two trustful sources? Guys, I wanted to share with you something super exciting and new. I've created a complete practical smart contract hacking course accumulating 12 years of my cybersecurity and blockchain experience. Without exaggerating, this is your holy grail all-in-one course which will instantly help you kickstart your career in smart contract hacking and security, making you the most demanded professional with insanely high salaries. Get exposed to tons of knowledge by signing up in the description below. Before compromising, let's plan our attack. So we need to compromise, comprise two sources, okay? Compromise two sources. This is step one of the attack. Step two of the attack would be update the price for 0.00001 ETH. Why? Because we want to buy it cheaply and remember this kind of uh, there is this kind of check that we sent bigger than zero, so we just update it to some kind of low amount of ETH. And then step three, we will try to buy NFTs from the exchange, cheap, because we updated the price to low number. Then on the fourth step, we're gonna update the price, update price to, I don't know, like the, the 9,900. So this is the amount that the exchange have. We want to steal all of it. So we're going to sell back the NFT to the exchange with this kind of price and sell NFT to exchange with expensive, highly expensive price. So we're going to trick the exchange and buy cheap from him the NFT and sell it expensive. Now we need to find out how to compromise this kind of two oracles so we can eventually update the price for the exchange. Going back to the exercise, we got this kind of int over here, this kind of leakage from a web server, and we have something that looks like, um, like hexadecimal uh, characters. So we want to convert it to text to see if there is something behind these hexadecimal characters. And the first guess would be to convert it to some kind of text, readable text that we can read. So let's find hex to text and we will just copy and paste these kind of characters over here. Let's remove the spaces in the beginning and we got some kind of text, okay? We still don't know what is this text, but I will just comment it over here. Then we are gonna copy the other one, which looks very, very similar. And we're gonna paste and we got another text. Now, if you are like, you have some experience in cybersecurity or in coding and programming, this string looks familiar. It looks like base 64 encoding. And once you're familiar with these kind of strings, you know that it's base 64 and you can decode it to text, right? So this is encoding, we can decode it. It's not encryption or something. It's not a hash, it's just a simple decoding. And by decoding it, we can decode it to this kind of um, text that looks like, what do you think does it look like? Yeah, it looks like a private key. So this is probably two private keys that they wanted to leak for us through the exercise. And I would guess that these private keys are the oracles, the trust, trustful sources for the oracles, I would say. Two of these ones. We don't know yet, but we can try and see what kind of address is behind this private key. So how do we know if these kind of private keys are the ones who match the oracles? First of all, we're gonna load them. So we're gonna do const key one equals. Then we want to set up a new eaters wallet, eaters object that will allow us to interact, some kind of a signer that will allow us to interact with the private key. So let const signer one equals this one and signer two equals key two. 
Now that we have the signer objects, we can check the address and check if it's the same address as, as the oracles, like our assumption is. So we'll do console.log um, signer1. And we're gonna do the same for signer2 to see which kind of uh, private keys are they. What, what can we, which kind of addresses can we control? We'll run yarn compromise. Now, obviously the change is not a uh, past because it's, we didn't exploit anything, but we have this kind of two addresses. E92 and 81A. E92 and 81A. Voila, perfect. These are the two oracles that we can control now because we own their private keys and now we can manipulate their prices. So now we want to set the buy price and the sell price. So const buy price. And this is the price that we are willing to buy the NFT from the exchange, from the marketplace. So eaters, eaters.utils.parse ether. We are willing to buy one NFT for 0.000001 ETH. This is our buy price, quite high, huh? And sell price, sell price, we want to buy, once we sold the NFT, we're gonna buy one and then we're gonna sell one NFT to the exchange. Now we want to drain all its balance. So it's gonna be this one, and let's leave it with this kind of uh, <laughs> low amount of it. So we go, once we bought the NFT, we're gonna sell it back to the exchange with this kind of ridiculously high price in order to drain all the ETH balance from the exchange and eventually we're, all the tests will pass through. So now we need to update the two Oracle prices. So we can remove this kind of console log over here and change the names from signer one to Oracle one and to Oracle no, two. Actually, it's gonna be Oracle two and Oracle three because we know already that these are Oracle 2 and Oracle 3. Now we need to call the post price function. Since we, are, we control the Oracle, the trusted, trustful, trusted source uh, private key, we can call this function and update the price for the two Oracles. So we're gonna do await this.oracle.postPrice. It gets how many parameters? Symbol and new price. The symbol is then vulnerable of NFT and the price will be buy price. But it won't work because now we are with the attacker, uh, connected with the attacker, so we need to connect the Oracle 2. Why? Because we need to send this transaction from the private key of Oracle 2. Let's make it simpler, Oracle 1 and 2 instead of 2 and 3, so it will be easier to understand. And we want to do the exact same thing for the other oracle that we compromise. So once, remember, once we control two of the oracles, we can update two of these prices to zero. The median price will be zero and we'll be able to control that price. Now, after we updated the price, hopefully, we want to buy NFT with the buy price, right? Because now that price is cheap because we updated the oracle. So we're going to buy, they call the buy one functions. So await this dot exchange dot buy one and it needs to be we need to send message value so we'll send value and buy price this is the the ETH that we're going to send to the function and we're going to connect our attacker let's add some comments manipulate price and buy nft i would say it reduce price and buy nft now we need to increase price and sell nft okay so how are we going to do it exact same thing we're gonna do this but instead of buy price it will be sell price quite simple as that and instead of buying nft we will sell one without sending any value but this time i think for the sell function we need to specify the token id now since no one is gonna mint any nft we can just specify one but in real life scenario probably we won't know the id of the nft so we need to listen to the event after we buy and make sure that we it's the same id because the sell function need to find this nft by this id now we know it's one because we're the only one who are gonna buy the nfts there are no other users but in real life we need to check the id now another thing that i forgot is that the sell one is going to use the transfer form it's going to send our nft token from our wallet to the exchange smart contract so we need to approve it first before we actually sell it so we're going to call the nft token we connect the attacker and approve the exchange to spend the id which is zero and not one and then we can sell it because if we don't approve it it won't be able to sell and that's it that's supposed to be enough 
And now remember, guys, we have to bring back, so like remove all the trails, all the, the trails that we left behind, and we need to change the initial NFT price. So we need to update it back to the initial NFT price. And we'll remove trails and bring back to and change to original price. So we're gonna do it like very, very quickly. We're gonna do it like in several transactions. Update Oracle price, manipulate price, buy NFT, buy NFT, manipulate price again, sell NFT, and move all the price back to normal so no one will know what happened unless they do some on-chain analysis. So the price should be the initial price, initial NFT price, which is over here. And that's supposed to be enough. Now I hope this exploitation works and eventually all the tests will pass through. And now it's the, the money time, now it's time to check. All right, so there was some problem. We needed to wait that the transaction will be confirmed and it didn't work because I had to add this kind of like a wait and to wait for the transaction to actually be processed. And now it's supposed to work. So I just changed it from a wait. It just did this kind of thing. All right, it's my time. Let's run the tests. Perfect, the exploit was succeeded, all the tests were passed, and that, then we, we made it. We were able to drain all the ETH from the exchange, smart contract, manipulate the NFT price using Oracle compromisation, trusted sources compromise, and it was super, super cool. Let me know if you have any questions. In the comments below, I'll be more than happy to help you. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel for more awesome tutorials in the future. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.